Hey guys, welcome to Brutes Magoots, where today we are going to be taking a look at, uh, I guess, the third and final chapter, at least I think, in uh, overhauling this Charvel Henrik signature model. Um, it's gone through quite a bit of changes. I got the guitar initially just to kind of make it my own or whatever, and then I went down this rabbit hole of doing a whole bunch of stuff to it. Uh, and here we are uh, at some point, you know You'd go so far into something and you're like ah, I should have just started with something fresh and new but like Anyway, that's not the route I took I went ahead and moved forward with all this stuff I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I love the guitar the way it was stock But I kept on wanting to do more to it and make it my own and I think I finally got there and um, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I know it does not look uh, very stock anymore um, but I absolutely love this guitar and it inspires me to play and at the end of the day that is literally all that matters it plays great and I love it uh, so let's look at this third and final stage and how we got here today what I'm going to do is the last time I was into this thing um, I had sanded down uh, the wood here and stuff and I just put like a little bit of true oil on it and I really fell in love with the way it feels. Uh, I'm not thrilled with the relic job on this thing, so what we are going to do is I'm going to strip all of the paint off this body, sand it down, and do some True Oil uh, rub on here, uh, just to get all that natural, beautiful natural grain all throughout there. Uh, and then um, because this guitar has gotten heavy, I have a like a 42 block on the back of this, um, original Floyd and then I have the FU tone um, pickup mounting system for both of these uh, so there's big brass blocks on here as well and uh, the way the guitar sits I really like it to go over to the right uh, for me so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to um, cut the back of this off about an inch or so and then just kind of like you know shape it in We'll see how that turns out. And then um, I think I'll also just add a uh, sigil um, right here or maybe to the back, um, a little seal on there. And then uh, I had custom cut this pick guard uh, for the reverse slant. Um, this is a hot rails and then this is a um, bare knuckle uh, nail bomb. And um, I am going to try and cut a uh, different pick guard on here, a like clear Lexan pick guard. I went down that route on um, the second round of mods for this thing, but it didn't turn out great. So now I got a darker smoked one. Um, I like the idea of seeing all the cavities in here, uh, just to see how that looks. I'm gonna get rid of the push push uh, pot um, here, um, which I relocated from here to there last round. I'm gonna keep that spot and I'm gonna add a two-way toggle on here. As far as, uh, a three-way, I never use um, all three or both pickups, the bridge and the neck at the same time. So I just need a two-way, um, so I'm gonna add a little two-way and then a standard volume pot on there. And um, yeah, we're gonna see how this goes. Back of here, um, you can see some of the work I've already done to the heel and stuff. You know, I got this guitar uh, so I can do projects like this and just go nuts with stuff and not feel like I'm ruining anything. Um, that's kind of the nice thing about these relics. Uh, so take everything out, sand everything down, and get rid of this terrible stuff throughout here and bring out this awesome wood grain throughout here. And we're just gonna see how it goes. All right guys, so I have everything apart now and um, I'm keeping the pickups in there while I work around it because that pickup mounting system was a pain in the butt to get the height set and all that stuff. So I don't even wanna mess with that anymore. So I'm leaving those in place, I'll just work around them. I've got the back of this kind of marked about how I want to shape this thing. And I'll, you know, I'll, uh, I'll finesse that more on the cut, but that gives me a general idea. So um, we'll see how it works. Uh, might be too much, might, might be perfect. I'm not really sure. Um, we'll see how that goes. And then I've got the template marked out for this guy. Um, and again, this is just, uh, some polycarbonate, which is a nice thing to work with because it doesn't break and crack and stuff. Um, it's pretty robust when you're drilling through it and working with it. So it's time to get started.
All right, now I have the back of this dude generally shaped. Um, still got some more finesse in there, but I got it kind of blocked out a bit. And uh, I'm relatively happy with the shape of that. I may shape it a little bit more as I sand it, but um, the big portion is done. And uh, sorry, I can't show what I'm doing when I'm doing it, but I'm not really set up to film that way. But I'll try and show you as much of the process as I can. All right, so I have the pick guard cut out. Um, some little things here and there to clean up on it, but overall it's cut out and I still need to add my little two-way switch here. But that's pretty much done. Now I'm going to remove the paint and sand this guy down. I'm not sure how this is going to go, but uh, I'm first going to try to heat it up with a heat gun and scrape it off. If not, then I'm just going to sand it down. All right, so the heating up seemed like it was taking too long. So I went with the oscillating sander. And let me tell you guys, uh, I am so glad the oscillating sanders exist because man is a lot of hard work. So still got ways to go, but I figure I'd show you progress so far. But man, oh man, ugh, be ready for this to be over. All right, guys, so I have the body sanded down um, pretty good by now. Um, I've wet sanded it as well. So it's nearing that stage for staining. Uh, I went ahead and added a little bit of access here because um, you know I'm already chopping it up anyway so why not so I got that in there um, which gains a lot it doesn't look like much but it actually gains a lot of area there and then um, little things I've done here is I've really smoothed that out again because I when I play like I play with it more towards my right and that kind of helps dig in that keep that from digging in my chest and overall um, it's looking pretty good I need to add over here, on the bottom here, I'm going to route out a little sigil in there and then should be ready for staining. So finally the body is prepped. I got my sigil routed out there. Um, if anybody wants to know, this little indent here is for the drop D tuna, or the D tuna. So that way I can pull back on a bar and it doesn't crash into the body. And then um, I am going to try uh, this medium brown from Stu Mac. I don't know how it's going to come out. Um, we're just going to jump into it. I did not seal the pores. Uh, I like open grain. Uh, so I'm just going to do that and see how it turns out. And then I plan on doing, you know, five or 10 coats of true oil over top of it and shit. Who knows? Let's All right, guys. So I just hit it with, uh, the medium brown and it's looking a little too pink for me so i think i'm going to try it again with a more stout concentrate or i'm just going to go with like a walnut because it's looking a little pinkish even though it's not showing up on camera really kind of didn't want it to be too off from what the neck has got going on and right now it's not looking apart so i'm gonna have to darken it up all right so i'm finished with the stain and i added the walnut over top um, just to kind of brown things up a bit because it was looking a little too red. And then I added some darker walnut in some wear areas where it would kind of see a darkening from the body rubbing. Here's the back. But overall, not too bad. Um, I'm not sure if I'm 100% sold on the color. But uh, worst case scenario is if I get it all together and I don't like it at some other point, I'll just strip it down again and refinish it. The next step is to, um, I'm going to use this Minwax Wipe On Poly uh, because it's got like a satin finish to it. So I'm going to do a few coats of that and let it dry and it should be done. All right, so the body is all sealed now. And uh, what I'm going to do is put in the sigil and I'm going to drop that in there. And then um, what I plan on doing is using 30 minute epoxy. And the idea there is that it gives it plenty of time to level out before it sets. Um, hopefully that works out. Uh, I'm just going to use a little syringe in there and fill it up and we'll see how that comes out. All right. So it's time to put the electronics in now. Um, and again, I'm going to go with this uh, Dunlop 500K 
pot. Uh, first time using them, but I've heard great things. And then I have this little on on two way switch. Um, again, I don't want like, I never use the bridge and neck at the same time. So I just want to go between the two. Uh, so hopefully this works on there and uh, we'll get jump started on it. Well, that was super easy. Uh, I wired it right up and it worked. Um, pretty simple electronics layout. Uh, but yes, you can use an on-on switch just to do a two-way. And I'm glad that worked out. All right, so the next thing on the list is to make a determination on which pick guard to go with. Now I've got this custom cut one um, that I cut up and you can see it's kind of translucent. You can see kind of inside there, um, which I kind of like. You know, it's dark, but if you catch it in the right light, you can see in there. Or I can just go with, if I can pull this up, I've got the other one. This is my standard deal. Just go with that guy. It looks cool, but like, I don't know. You know what? I think I'm going to go with the clear just to see how it works. All right, so I decided to go with the black pick guard because the clear just shows stuff too, way too much um, as far as imperfections and blemishes. So I am going to go with this one. And then um, <clears throat> one trick that I do that some of you guys might not know about is I put little pieces of 3M double-sided tape on the pick guard. And what that does is that kind of cuts down on the microphonic tapping that you sometimes get um, if your fingers like hit the pick guard. Uh, and it kind of keeps it in place. Um, so I like doing that and it's time to get installed. And finally, the last thing on the body is to finally fill the sigil routing that I did. Um, I attempted to do epoxy and I mixed it up and put it in a test cup, but uh, mixing it up aerated it too much and there was too many bubbles in there that didn't um, work their way out before it cured. So. I got some Gorilla Glue instead, and I did a little testing on that. It seemed to work a lot better as far as bubbles in it. Um, so we're gonna give this a shot. Oh, and if anybody's asking uh, why this strap lock is, or strap is off center, um, that's where they put it in from the factory. So I assume that they didn't want this screw in the center between the two halves of wood. Uh, so they put it about a quarter inch or so off um, so I just when I cut the back end of this off I just reinstalled this in the same exact spot that they had it uh, originally uh, it looks kind of weird but uh, I'm assuming that they had a plan for that and it wasn't a mistake all right guys so uh, since I have this guitar all apart anyway uh, instead of doing it in multiple stages I'm just going to go ahead and refret it while I have everything apart um, I've got my Jeskar stainless uh, Super Jumbo on there. Um, I haven't messed with stainless before. Um, I've done some gold, some Jeskar gold stuff, and that's kind of in between uh, stainless and nickel. Uh, I know it tears up tools and it's a pain in the butt uh, to work with, but I'm going to find that out. Um, I was going to refinish the fingerboard, um, but it's already got some nice wear just from my playing, which is hopefully showing up on there. So I think I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is take my soldering iron and heat up these frets, heat up the glue on the frets. I use my trusty Stumac fret pullers and get those all up and kind of clean out the slots. Uh, I use uh, this dude right there to clean out the slots. And then if I need to kind of clean them out more than I use um, this guy, which works out pretty well. So let's jump into this. All right, so I have all of the frets pulled on here and I have all the slots cleaned out and I am not going to remove the kind of relic job that they've done on the neck here because I want to keep that aged relic look. Um, and here we can already see like the wear on the fretboard where my fingers have been. Um, so that's coming in really nicely. I have all of the stainless steel frets cut. Um, I definitely recommend getting the, um, the Stumac cutters for that, nippers, cutters, uh, instead of doing like a cutoff wheel on a Dremel because you don't want to anneal the metal. Uh, so it's best to just use those and 
snap them off there. So it's ready to get the frets on there. I'm gonna put some CA in there and then press in the frets and then we'll take it from there. So the frets are all pressed in now. Um, so what I do next is I will mask the fretboard and I will file down the ends of all the frets. And then uh, since it's a compound radius, uh, what I like to do next is I go through and um, I got this little spot leveler and I'll take down any high spots that I find. And then I take uh, my radius gauges and I mark the true points on here. So I'm looking for 12, um, 14, 15, 16. So I'll mark those on the um, masking tape. And then I take my radius blocks of uh, 14 and you know my 12, 14, 15, 16. And I just kind of like level out those general areas uh, just to get a general roundness to the ear. And then I take my sanding beam and I start on the center and I kind of work my way out, sanding out like that and then over here. And eventually like I just go kind of all the way across and kind of level everything out. All right guys, so I've been hard at work. I figured I would just show you a quick update about where I'm at. Um, so I've got everything taped off obviously. Um, the major points as far as 12, 14, and 16 inch radius. And I have um, trimmed down all the ends of the frets. And now I am going to use my uh, front end beveling file and my little stew mac uh, deal and kind of get those all even. And then I'll start with the spot leveling and then overall sanding and beveling. But uh, let me tell you, everything everybody says about stainless steel frets is true. They are a pain in the butt to work with. Um, yeah, this is this is a pain. I'll be glad when it's done. I know it's going to be worth it, but man, it is a freaking pain. That and a compound radius uh, combined um, is adding a new level of difficult for me. And on a side note, I just received this long beam fret leveler and uh, it's not perfectly true so i'm just going to throw it on mill here and mill this surface flat and true so it's accurate uh, it's one of those things where uh, you get what you pay for and just like that we take a extruded piece down to a finely machined flat surface all right so now i have all of the frets leveled and all of the ends cleaned up or at least filed down and um, I've rechecked uh, my 12 and 14 and 16 positions as far as the compound, so I'm good there. So now I'm ready to recrown the frets because um, some, you know, got knocked down a bit during the filing. And for that, uh, I use this Z file uh, from Stu Mac. Um, it really makes quick work of recrowning a fret. And then I use this little. Um, fret and file uh, from them too. And they both uh, work pretty well on this stainless stuff. So I know it seems like I'm a Stu Mac guy. Um, I, I don't, you know, I buy all my stuff from them. Um, it's, I don't get paid or anything like that. I'm just trying to tell you guys what I use and what I have good luck with. It's on the more expensive side of stuff, but um, they really hold up for the long run. I have finally recrowned all the frets and um, I don't know if you can tell or not, but like I leave it just a thinnest little strip on top to make contact with the strings. And um, so I've got all that recrowned and now it comes to the sanding and polishing. I use a mix of, you know, sanding sticks and fret erasers and then um, like even some little sanding wheels here. And then I buff and polish it. So we're gonna get started on that right now. All right, so I finally have everything polished up and uh, it doesn't show up too good on camera, but um, they're all nicely and done. And uh, I usually use mothers uh, to finish it off, but um, I came across this Cape Cod 
metal polishing cloths. And uh, these things work fantastic. Uh, I couldn't recommend it enough. Um, it's awesome, awesome stuff. So now, finally, after this long process, it's time to put the guitar back together. All right, guys, so it's all done. And um, I've actually had this to get together for probably a couple weeks now, uh, maybe three weeks or so. Um, I just kind of wanted to get a feel for everything, um, see if I wanted to make any changes to it. Uh, but I really, really like the way that it turned out. I'm very happy with it. Uh, I struggled a bit to get the wood color I wanted as far as the staining on the body. Uh, and I was At the end, I was worried about the dark walnut being too dark, but I actually really like it. And I think it complements the headstock and stuff really well. Uh, pick guard, I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna stick with the black. Um, the two-way switch uh, works fantastic, and I love that. Again, I never use the combination of both of them together. Um, down here, we have Lucifer's Sigil, because this guitar is here to do the devil's work. Um, over here, like I have like some random places of like heavier staining and weathering, so to speak, to kind of add to the relic part, you know, that I've done as far as on the headstock and everything. Um, and it's kind of in the frets and whatnot. I kept all that uh, stock. I didn't clean up and re-level the fretboard. I just cleaned up the frets when I removed them. And uh, the frets came out um, really good. And uh, the playability is just insane with this thing. It just feels phenomenal. And um, I really, really love the way this thing turned out. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. Let's go ahead and look at the back. And here again, we have, um, you know, I've, I've done some stuff throughout here, although the camera is not really picking it up so much. I think it's under too heavy of lighting. Um, and then like, uh, here's the contour I did on this part. Um, just kind of round that out because it usually digs into my chest. And uh, here's a little scallop I did on this area. Can I get a shot of that? Um, yeah, I like all that. And then here is just a view of this. I didn't really do anything inside here except for just kind of um, remove most of the paint and just kind of went ahead and stained that uh, to, to match. And uh, that's all my little system on there. Uh, I have uh, two other videos on the stage one and stage two of this. Again, this is stage three. So I will include the, those links in the description of this video. And then since everybody always asks, um, I will include like a quick little clip of me playing this guitar um, because people always want to know how it sounds and stuff like that. But, you know, this video really wasn't for sound or anything like that. It was just, um, you know, visual mods and playability and mods and things. So, um, you know, that doesn't really matter, but I'll include it anyway. Uh, I like the way that it plays. I'm not the best player, but, um, you know, it makes me happy. And again, uh, you know, all this is is to inspire and um, inspire people to play and for me to play. And that's what it does. I absolutely love it. Um, I have the list included in the description of this video of all the mods, which they are extensive. And, you know, if you have a uh, Charvel Henrik and you're wanting to do some stuff to it, hopefully this inspires you. Or if you have a guitar that you want to kind of overhaul, hopefully this inspires you. And um, if you have any questions or anything like that, be happy to answer them on you know anything I did on the refretting or anything like that. Um, I'll be happy to answer that for you guys. But um, this thing is just butter smooth to play. Uh, the Henrik neck already felt amazing, um, but with the stainless steel frets, this thing is just a dream to play. And I absolutely freaking love it. Um, and again, like these necks wear so well, like I'm already starting to get, you know, some, some good wear here um, on the fingerboard. So I can't wait to see how that kind of wears in over time. And uh, you know, that's just, that's that kind of relic I like to just have done like from playability, you know, from playing from hours, you know, just actually like playing the instrument. I kind of ride the fence on the relic thing. For one thing, like I don't mind relics, obviously, because I bought one. Um, but 
you know, I, for me personally, uh, I don't mind relic body and stuff like that. But when we start to get into like the, the relic, you know, faked, um, fretboard wear and stuff like that, I'm not, it's not for me. I get that it's totally for, for people and whatnot, like, but I kind of like to do that myself through my own hours and hours of playing. Uh, it helps me like create it, you know, add to it, you know, add to the relic job. And, um, that's kind of like my thing. But um, again, to each their own, and I'll never judge anybody for what they want to do. Again, um, if it inspires you, then that's all that matters. So I will leave you guys uh, with a quick clip of me playing this guitar. And uh, feel free to ask any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. And also feel free to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications for new videos. And until next time, I will see you guys later. I love you.